California stands at the peak of Western civilization. The Golden State is easily recognizable by people all around the world. Beautiful beaches, delicious food, and a multitude of different attractions are just some reasons for its international fame. As a result, millions upon millions of tourists flock to California every year, hoping to experience the magic that is advertised through Hollywood. But this begs the question, what is the best city in California to visit? Now, let me surprise you. It is neither San Francisco or Los Angeles. Although these are certainly not awful, far from it. In my opinion, there's a city that surpasses them both. Let me introduce you to America's finest city, San Diego. Now, I know this may come as a shock for some people. While I'm sure a lot of people have heard of San Diego, I'm sure many of you didn't think that it would claim the number one spot on this list. But let me justify this statement. San Diego's, I don't know, greatness can be attributed to three major factors. Their beaches, their food, and their tourist attractions. Let's start off with the most iconic part of San Diego, its beaches. California in general is known for its amazing beaches. Like when you think of California, you probably first think about the amazing beaches talked about all throughout media and Hollywood. San Diego contributes heavily to this as the city has a wide variety of beautiful beaches, many of them being considered to be some of the best in all of the state. Let's look into some of the best beaches San Diego has to offer. Mission Beach is a pretty beautiful beach that I personally got to visit. Actually, all the beaches on the list I've paid a visit to, so just keep that in mind. I should also mention that Mission Beach is also connected to Pacific Beaches, and they're just like two parts of the same thing. They just have different names for some reason, but I'll be referring to both of them as Mission Beach. And yeah, I can confirm, Mission Beach is amazing. Quite simple. I mean, it's literally just a normal stock standard beach. It's what you expect as a beach when you go to California. But there's a beauty in its simplicity. It's just a great place to just swim, lounge around, and even play beach games like volleyball or soccer. But another great part about Mission Beach is it's surfing. Mission Beach does not have huge waves, which you might think is a bad thing, but it's actually a good thing for beginner surfers like me. I learned how to surf on this beach, and I can confirm, it's amazing. Now this isn't a video about surfing, but Mission Beach is an amazing place to pick up the sport. The waves are small enough that they aren't too difficult to swim past, which is a very, very big thing when, it's, when you're starting off in surfing, but big enough to give you that exhilarating ride to the shore. And if you can't do this, you can ride the whitewash and still get to experience that adrenaline rush. Just be careful about stingrays, there's some stingrays, do the stingray shuffle. It's basically what you think when you think of a California beach. Just nice sand, clear water, and just beach light. Coronado Beach is another famous beach in California, which is particularly known for its amazing sand and its beautiful sunset. If you didn't know, Coronado Beach is famous for its mineral mica sand, which is a rare kind of sand that glows, kinda. To be honest though, it, it's just sand, but I guess if you're into this like beauty picturesque stuff, then yeah, it is for you. But more importantly is the sunset. The sunset in Coronado is very, very beautiful and is a must-see if you're staying in San Diego. Coronado Beach is more of a view beach than, you know, a traditional beach beach. While you can still do stuff like swimming and playing around and launching around it is much better to just enjoy the beauty and the sunrise and the sunset now we come to my favorite beach of all time and as well as the highest rated beach in all of california according to some sources welcome to la jolla la jolla is just well breathtaking i only got to visit once but let me tell you it is beautiful there's just so so many things to do now a major attraction of la jolla is the wildlife you do not need any special equipment to see creatures of all shapes and sizes for example you can hike down these rocks to see sea lions wrestling in the rocks which is what i did which might be the footage in the background maybe you know, I don't know. And you're allowed to get pretty close. Like, I was pretty much, maybe not two arms reach because I didn't want to get my hands bitten off, but I was relatively close to the seals so I could see them up close. Just a safety thing, don't get too close to the seals or sea lions. I forgot what they're called. They might be sea lions because they might bite, especially the males. They might be territorial and aggressive and it will hurt. But if you stay at a safe distance and try not to irritate them, you should be fine. Actually, when I was swimming, a sea lion just whizzed back at me and it was like so scary because I thought, oh no, I'm going to get attacked. But it was just like a split second and then all my fear left. That was really cool. And if you're brave and lucky enough, I didn't get to see them personally, but you can see all sorts of fish, dolphins, and maybe even a shark. And if you want to rent equipment, it gets even more exciting. Renting up kayaks, snorkels, and scuba gear can elevate the experience. You can now explore places you couldn't before. Now, I didn't get to do this, but according to some sources of the internet, it's an amazing experience to just rent out these things. So if you have the extra money to spare, I would recommend you splurge it here. Now, side note, there's also this little cave you can explore, which is a place where you can take a cool photo. Uh, my GoPro did not really take a good photo of this place, but it looked pretty cool. Like you stand up and the wave crashes down you and there's some crabs in there. It's just a really good time. And don't worry, you can still do traditional beach activities. Want to sunbathe, swim, and even surf? There are multiple places around the cove where you can do this. In fact, the swimming here is probably better than that of other beaches due to the sheer abundance of nature. 
like it's not so wild that it's like the deep ocean but it's wild enough where you can see like these cool little plants fish all these cool little stuff like sure on other beaches you might see the occasional fish or maybe like a stingray but la jolla nature is in your face and it is not very hard to spot wildlife but besides this la jolla is very beautiful like very very beautiful it's just made to be picturesque so along with amazing activities you get this amazing amazing spectacular scenery i don't know how to describe it it's just magical of course there's also the la jolla neighborhood to walk and i think there's like some good like restaurants around the area actually this goes for more beaches there's usually a like surf neighborhood near here if you're going to take anything from this it's that san diego has the best beaches in california overall if the three beaches i described especially la jolla have not convinced you of this look at this according to tripadvisor and a tripadvisor isn't always 100 accurate but so we're going to take it as an example three out of the top 10 beaches in all of california are in san diego and of course la jolla takes a spot as the number one beach in california in this list so just do without what you will so while there is kind of some competition in my opinion san diego absolutely dominates the beach scene in california and to be honest i don't even really think it's close but their amazing beaches are not all they have to offer let's talk about food san diego also boasts an impressive variety of delicious food now in general in terms of cuisine san diego has good mexican street food seafood asian food and all these weird like little niche pubs you can go to but i would like to highlight some restaurants i think you should visit the taco stand is a restaurant chain founded in san diego it is a mexican style restaurant mainly serving burritos tacos and quesadillas but in those three categories they do serve a wide variety of food like they have a lot of different tacos now i'm not going to go through the entire menu but just know that you can order foods like al pastor to california burritos which are apparently very good uh, i'm not spanish I, I can't speak spanish so i apologize polo acedo quesadilla that sounded really bad next up asian food if you're a sushi person people in san diego really seem to like sushi ota sushi ota is a japanese style sushi restaurant and and as far as I can tell, it is very well reviewed. They serve fresh fish with your sushi, which is just excellent. If anybody's ever like caught seafood and then eaten it fresh, you know the difference between fresh seafood and preserved seafood. It's completely different. Now we come to my favorite food place in San Diego, as, as well as some of the best food I've ever had in my life. Welcome to Pacific Beach Fish Shop, an amazing seafood restaurant. This is the one I have personally visited, and let me tell you, it was delicious. When you go there, I think you're supposed to choose the type of fish and how you want it seasoned in the style. Except that's not what I did. I just kind of got clam chowder and then like ate some other food as well. The clam chowder bowl is amazing. I went to San Francisco for the famous bread bowl, but this restaurant might have done it better. It's everything a clam chowder should be. It's just like like creamy and like salty and like I, I don't know how to put it bready. <laughs> I don't know. Though. The fish and chips are particularly excellent, and I would definitely recommend the halibut. But there are other good options too. The fish and chips are both full of texture and crunchy and just well, I, I also don't know how to describe it. Just of course, I'm just picking and choosing. If you really want to know the full food scene in San Diego, just search up some good restaurants. San Diego's got a lot of good food. The San Diego food scene is very good. San Diego is known for some good food, that's for sure. At the same time, Los Angeles and San Francisco and actually other cities also boast some pretty good food. Like Los Angeles apparently has really good Korean food. San Francisco famous for their bread bowls, even though I think that San Diego fish shop did it better. You know, like they have food, it's pretty good. I think it gives some good competition, but in my opinion, I think San Diego was the best California food I ate. Now, granted, I don't live in California, so I don't really know the ins and outs of every single city. Like, I don't know, maybe San Antonio is like the best in chips in the world, who knows? But to be fair, the fact that San Diego has this high quality of food and has beaches and has what I'm going to talk about next. But think of San Diego food as kind of like a side part. Like you want to go here and oh, San Diego also has this amazing food to have on the side. It, San Diego's food is not the reason you visit San Diego, but a reason. Think of it that way. But San Diego's food is definitely excellent. Don't get me wrong. It was delicious and honestly some of the best food in California I had in there. Probably the best food I had in California to be honest. But food and beaches aren't all San Diego has to offer. Let's look at some of San Diego's famous tourists attractions now if you're watching this far in the video that probably means you're enjoying it so if you could go ahead and hit that subscribe button comment and maybe even turn on the notification bell it, it means a lot SeaWorld San Diego is a famous tour attraction and it is a bit pricey to be fair but if you have some extra money to splurge I definitely recommend you visit here especially if you're on the younger side of people I mean if you're older and you're not into this stuff fine but if you are I definitely check out SeaWorld. Marine life is of course a huge part of SeaWorld San Diego. You can go and check out and interact with fish, sharks, sea lions, and many more. In fact, you can even touch some smaller animals. I think they might be sharks, I'm not sure. Which is a little scary, but pretty cool nonetheless. But you're probably here for the shows. San Diego SeaWorld is famous for its sea-themed shows, Orca Encounters. This show features the park's iconic killer whales. It focuses on orca behavior, communication, and the importance of ocean conservation, rather than traditional tricks and jumps. Dolphin Adventures. But don't worry, if you're here to see a 
traditional acrobatic show, look no further than Dolphin Adventures. Watch Bottlenose Dolphins perform impressive acrobatic feats alongside the trainers, showcasing their intelligence, speed, and playful nature. Sea Lion and Otter Spotlights, a fun, apparently comedic show, I don't know, I haven't watched it, featuring interactions between otters, sea lions, and their trainers, and it's supposed to be comedic, but then again, this is a show I didn't watch. SeaWorld is rated as one of the top theme parks in California, along with the rest of America. Like, if you search up best theme parks in America, SeaWorld San Diego will probably show up. But theme park, what do you mean theme park? Well, San Diego also offers some traditional roller coasters as well. Not just roller coasters, like other, I think like other rides as well, but I, let's talk about some of them. Electric Eel. Want to ride the tallest, most thrilling, and fastest roller coaster in not only SeaWorld, but the whole San Diego area? You won't want to miss the Electric Eel. I saw this thing at a distance, and man, it looks scary just looking at it. Journey to Atlantic for is like less experienced, you know, people who don't like fast or high, just don't like roller coasters in general, but it still gives the riders a thrill and experience as well. Emperor is basically your classic drop coaster with a long 90 degree drop with some loop de loops out. If you've ever gone to Yukon Striker in Canada's Wonderland, which I have visited before, it's kind of like that. And of course, the recently opened Arctic Rescue is, is your classic launch coaster with a sea theme. You'll be sent 40 miles per hour, which is a lot faster than you think. Obviously, it's not the fastest coaster in the world, but it's still fast enough to give you a thrill. And if you're new to launch coasters, I'd definitely try this one out. Basically, think of SeaWorld San Diego as a combination of an aquatic zoo and a theme park. Now, if you want a more traditional zoo, welcome to San Diego Zoo. San Diego Zoo is one of the most famous and highly regarded zoos in the world. It spans over 100 acres and is home to more than 3,500 animals representing over 650 species and subspecies, from snakes to giraffes to polar bears to penguins. It hosts some rare species as well, like koalas and panda bears. A coolest part about the San Diego Zoo is its open air enclosures. Open air enclosures, if you didn't know, are basically having animals not in cages. This lets you see the animals in more of their natural habitats, giving a more authentic and like more natural feeling. Now I could go on and on and on about the zoo, like it is the highest rated zoo in California. California, which is like I think the biggest state not physically but like population wise and I, it's one of the best in the world So I can just keep talking on about it But basically just know that you should just check it out if you have some time now to be fair Both of these tourist attractions cost money if you want something that's a little cheaper check out Balboa Park Now San Diego Zoo is actually based in Balboa Park, but that's not all of the park I saw for far from it Balboa Park I think that's how you pronounce it is basically this huge area where it has a lot of natural wonders and a lot of shopping malls and like food places to eat and stuff like that. It's like kind of like a really big outdoor shopping mall. But that doesn't really sound like a tourist attraction, but let me convince you. The Balboa Park is home to 18 museums. Now personally, I don't really love museums, but if you're into museums, check out any one of these museums. I'm just going to name a couple of them. Japanese Friendship Garden Museum, Mingel International Museum, San Diego Air and Space Museum, the San Diego Museum of Art, and World Beat Center, which I don't know what that is, that sounds like music. Of course, if you get hungry as well, just check out the wide variety of restaurants along this place. Like, I'm sure there's many, many restaurants that you can check out and enjoy some fine dining or some cheaper dining too. I don't know, I don't live there. It's just an amazing place to walk around and just really experience the feel of San Diego culture and just like visiting San Diego in general. It's just a beautiful walk. And the best part of this tourist attraction is that it does not cost money. You can just wander around the beautiful area. Like look at the scenic views of the glowing lights and the beautiful beach in the distance and like the water and the nature. It's just an amazing scenery in general. Like I have to recommend it. While yes, you could spend money here, it is not mandatory. I mean, just look at this beautiful scenery, the combination of the nature and the lights and like the atmosphere and just everything that San Diego encapsulates into like this little tiny mall. And for that, you do not have to pay a single penny. I'll be honest, San Diego does not dominate the tourist attraction scene as it does the beach scene. San Diego does have some heavy competitions from cities like San Francisco or Anaheim, which come really close or maybe even beat San Diego. But then again, they do have San Diego Zoo, which is the best zoo in California. And they have SeaWorld, one of the best themed parks in California, as well as one of the best in America. But then again, San Francisco also has the Golden Gate Bridge. It also has that little island or something called Alcatraz. Los Angeles has the Hollywood sign. Anaheim also has all those theme parks as well. So there is some fierce competition. But the fact that you can visit some top-notch tourist attractions while also having all the benefits as said before, like the beaches and food, just shows the city's prowess in being extraordinary. In conclusion, San Diego's combination of its beaches, food, and tourist attractions makes it the best city in California to visit. There's just so, so much to do and see in this beautiful city. As I said before, I think San Diego embodies everything California should be. San Diego just has everything great about California tied to one city. 
The Golden Sea surf culture just radiates in the city. Delicious food is just found in every single corner, no matter where you look. Asian food, Mexican food, you name it. And for the more traditional travelers, or maybe even locals, I don't know, they have a wide variety of tourist attractions to keep you entertained. Theme park guy, visit SeaWorld. A zoo guy, visit San Diego Zoo. I know I'm repeating myself, but still, I want to make this point clear. Honestly, every other city in California can only really challenge San Diego in one way or the other, but they can't beat them in every single aspect. San Francisco may even keep, San Francisco may keep up or maybe even beat San Diego with its tour attractions, but loses in the quality of beaches. California is famous for its beaches after all, and San Diego has some of the finest collections in all of California. Los Angeles may have good food, like apparently they're really good clean food, but it is lacking in tourist attractions. And no, Anaheim is not part of Los Angeles, okay? I know that they're right beside each other, but on a technicality, I'm complaining cities as they are, not what's near them, okay? I know technically Los Angeles and Anaheim are really close, but I don't care Anaheim is part of Los Angeles. And Anaheim may be San Diego and tourist attractions once again, but cannot keep up with surfing once again. It's just San Diego surf scene really is the main staking point in like beating out every other city. Like besides Los Angeles, San Francisco, and maybe Anaheim, no other city really can compete with San Diego in California. And in my opinion, San Diego clears all of them. Also, side note, San Diego is also pretty safe. Like compared to LA and San Francisco, it is much less likely that you'll get jumped or robbed. Like sure, there's some dangerous places, like most cities have some dangerous places, but it's not nearly as dangerous as like, let's say the Tenderloin District in San Francisco or Compton in Los Angeles. Also, another side note is pretty suitable for every traveler, rich or poor. Now, to be fair, the flight there or the hotel there, they're all gonna be pretty expensive. Nothing you can really do there. That's pretty much everywhere in California. A lot of things you can do here are free. Free places like almost every single beach, including La Jolla and Mission Pacific Beach. La Jolla is one of, if not the best beach in California. Keep that in mind. And if you want to splurge, just check out SeaWorld. That's pretty expensive. As well as a multitude of fancy restaurants in the San Diego area. There's just something for every sort of traveler to do. And I can almost guarantee you, if you're visiting California to experience like the California experience, I don't really know how to put it. San Diego really just encapsulates all of what California is into one city. It is just beautiful. There's just something to do for every single type of traveler and I can almost guarantee you you'll thoroughly enjoy your visit in San Diego. Anyways, just know that in my opinion, the best city to visit in California is San Diego. After all, it's called America's finest city for a reason. Thanks for watching everyone. Um, this video did take a while to make as well as all the other shorts that are coming out with it. I mean, if you haven't noticed, I really do want to grow up this channel. I think this is a passion of mine. I really want to make this channel bigger. And I know it's really small right now. I think I have like 16 subscribers. So if you could click that subscribe button, hit that like bell, especially if you enjoyed and watched this far. If you watched this far, that means you're going to help with my watch time percentage, which is really good. So thank you because of that. Thank you for watching this far. And please, yeah, check out any other videos. And yeah, if there's any other other places that you might want me to cover not that i can really afford that right now but maybe when i can hopefully when this channel grows up maybe i'll get to visit those places i don't know that's all i want to say to you so again just thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one goodbye